All right, so this is only useful to people in the US, but it's a quick primer to jury nullification. So what is jury nullification? Jury nullification is the logical consequence of two rules within our legal system. One, jurors cannot be punished for reaching a wrong decision. And two, defendants who are acquitted cannot be tried again for the same alleged crime. Essentially, jury nullification is an event in which a jury decides to vote not guilty despite the judge's instructions, the letter of the law, or the defendant's perceived guilt. This can occur for a variety of reasons, including personal, moral, or ethical problems with the law itself, or simply a personal distrust of the processes making up the so-called justice system. But a lawyer, judge, cop, or someone told me that it's not allowed. These are people with a vested interest in maintaining the status quo of the predatory authoritarian capitalist system in which we reside, and as such, unless you're paying the attorney yourself, don't trust them. Police lie, lawyers lie, judges lie. In Sparf v. U.S., the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that, in fact, juries have every right to nullify laws, but oddly enough, the reason you'll never hear about it was also born of that very case. While SCOTUS found that it is perfectly legal for juries and jurors to utilize nullification, it's also not the responsibility, nor is it required of the judges or prosecutors to inform the juries of this particular option at their disposal. Seizing upon this opportunity, judges and prosecutors have exploited the language in the ruling to generally forbid any mention of the act of nullification in the courtroom, or in some instances, in areas anywhere near the courthouse. But... Don't let this act of regressive force fool or intimidate you. Jury nullification has a relatively long and storied history, including modern-day cannabis growers being set free due to juries unwilling to convict, to William Penn being acquitted by English jurors for practicing his religion, he was a Quaker, and even northern abolitionists facing trial for violations of the Fugitive Slave Act, aiding and abetting runaway peoples who others considered chattel. So... How? What do I do? First, take jury duty. So many people act as if jury duty is such a grind. More than tweeting, more than writing your congressperson, jury duty allows you as an individual system to undermine and launch your own micro-revolution within the confines of a decidedly micro-fascist arena. One person can completely derail the entity of the weight of of the system brought to bear upon a fellow human. Second, shut up about it. The prosecutor and judge will never let you be impaneled, add, added to the jury. If you give even the slightest hint that you are anti-authoritarian, anti-fascist, anti-police, or any of the other host of beliefs and, uh, and philosophies that threaten their little fiefdom. So, when it comes to the interviews, shut up about it. Just give bare essential answers. Don't elaborate and certainly don't tell them exactly what you think about their bullshit tyranny. Third, shut up about it. Part two. Once you've been selected or impaneled, keep your mouth shut even more. Do not enter the deliberation room and start blasting off about how all of this is rubbish and you're not voting, uh, you're voting not guilty no matter what. You owe no one a reason. You owe no one an explanation. If it gets back to the judge or prosecuting attorney or attorneys that you know your rights and intend to exercise them, they can, and in too numerous of occasions to mention here, have remo removed jurors from the jury because of their willingness to exercise these rights. Fourth. The art of pers persuasion. This is where you have to make a decision. Are you going to attempt to go for full nullification or just hang the jury? This is a deeply personal and situational event. It requires you to pay attention to your fellow jurors and read the room effectively. If a couple of jurors are leaning towards not guilty to begin with, side with them. Formulate arguments that augment theirs and concentrate your energies on jurors that seem to be on the fence anyway. Human beings are pack animals and easily subjected to influence by group pressures. If you feel you can swing a not guilty verdict, go for it. Now, if you're fighting an uphill battle and it seems that in no way can you achieve a full acquittal, then your next best option is to just hang the jury. 
Granted, it means that the defendant may end up being prosecuted once more with a new jury, but it also means more resources consumed by the state and generally isn't great for the prosecution's case. All that is required to hang a jury is that you vote not guilty. Period. Just keep saying that you feel you still have reasonable doubts about the circumstances and handling of the case and not guilty. 